Good morning. Would you stand with us this morning? Yours is the name high above any other. Yours is the kingdom forever you reign. And yours is the power that lifted us out of the grave. Yours is the heart that is beating inside us. Yours is the glory in all of the fame. And yours is the love that you pour down on us. We're rising up to sing your praise. To the King Almighty, to the one who saves. Be glory and honor for all our days. With our hands toward heaven and our voices raised. To the King Almighty, we give all our praise. Yeah. Yours is the whole earth. Yours is the whole earth and everything in it. Yours are the stars that you spoke into place. And yours are the sounds of the sons and daughters lifting up your holy name. To the King Almighty, to the one who saves, be glory and honor for all our days. With our hands toward heaven and our voices raised To the King Almighty we give all our praise For unending mercy, for amazing grace The life everlasting, the sins erased With our hands toward heaven and our voices raised To the King Almighty we give all our praise Given, shouting our praise with our hands toward heaven. Rest and redeemed, we're alive, we're forgiven. Shouting our praise with our hands toward heaven. Rest and redeemed, we're alive, we're forgiven. Shouting our praise with our hands toward heaven. Voices raised to the King Almighty, we give all our praise for the ending mercy, for the amazing things, the life of the last, the sins he makes. With our hands on head and our voices raised to the King Almighty, we give all our praise. Glad to be here this morning. Amen. Why don't you turn to someone and greet them this morning? church is all about people becoming disciples of Jesus. What does that look like? We connect, we grow, and we make a difference. A special welcome to all guests. Whether it's your first time, second time, or maybe you haven't been here in a while, we are so glad you're here. In the seat back pocket in front of you, you'll find a card labeled, so you're new here. This will provide a few details to make your visit the best it can be. Also in the seat back pocket, 
you'll find the Connect card. If you're here for the first time, fill that out and let us know you're here. Bring it to the hub in the back, and we got some special info and a gift for you there. If you're here for the second time, we would love to know you're back. Fill out your Connect card. Bring it to the hub. We've got a special gift for you as well. A $10 gift card of your choice. Whether you're a guest or a regular, the Connect card is a way to sign up for things. Information about the church, ministry, or events, as well as opportunities to volunteer and serve. You can also request prayer or let us know of a decision that you're making today to follow Jesus. After filling out the Connect card, you can place it in the offering or drop it by the hub on your way out. We are so glad you're here. Hey, good morning, One Church. Good morning. Oh, it's chilly. The first thing I did this morning was check the weather, and the, it was 33 degrees. Oh, that's like not a pretty number to me. The high today is 55. For those of you who don't know, I'm born and raised in Hawaii, so like, ooh, those are scary numbers this morning yeah. to me. So anyway, welcome to church today. Uh, if you're a visitor today, make sure you stop by the hub, fill out that Connect card, and get your first or second time visitor gift, right? Yeah. And also today, after the second service uh, at, at our home, we are having our Connect Lunch, and it'll start about 1245. So if you have not joined us for a Connect Lunch, come on over, just stop by the hub and get some directions. Right now, we want to bring a few things to your guys' attention. There's two key places where you can find out what's happening at One Church. One of them's in the bulletin or online. And so right now, we're going to give you guys a few reminders. All right. And um, also, if you haven't liked us yet on Facebook, you can like One Church Riverbank. Lots of good updates there as well. Um, this Friday is our volunteer rally dinner at the, at the Bethel campus. Super excited about that. So if you serve, uh, you know, at church, whatever it is, whether you serve once a month or you serve every weekend, we would just love for you to be a part of that dinner. dinner. And um, we're finalizing our head count. So we need everybody to register so we know uh, how many adults are going to be there and how many littles we have to feed. So you can register at visitonechurch.com backslash dream team. So if you have not had a chance to volunteer yet, but you'd like to serve, would you also consider coming and joining us for dinner? And it's going to be a great night. We'll see you on Friday night. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. We're excited. On uh, next week, Sunday on the 28th. Oh, well, that's not next week. It's two weeks. Sorry. It's been I don't even. Oh, no. So, see, that's my bag. <laughs> you never know. Like, never trust Grady with dates. Like. <laughs> Uh, next week's January 28th, we're having our youth hype night. It's going to be very awesome. We start at 6 o'clock. We're going to have free food, games, and it's going to be great because we're going to have free food. So youth need to come. You, all youth need to come. Yes. If you ever want Grady to do anything for you, feed him that like this. He will mobilize. Yes. Yes. Food's my love language. Okay. <laughs> Food's your love language. Okay, so that's um, hype night for, for the teens, so encourage your teens to be out there and to bring their friends next week. Uh, also coming up is the Sweet Life Conference. I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks. This is the last year that the district conference is going to be at the house here in Modesto, and then the conference is going to move to Sacramento <laughs> because it's gotten so large. If you have not yet signed up, uh, please uh, go to the upcoming events table and get some information. So ladies, uh, young ladies, all ages of ladies, come with me to Sweet Life. It's going to be awesome. And there is a price break for young women under the age of uh, 25 and under. Great event for teen teenagers, youth age, uh, young women as well. Okay? It's going to fill up. It's already filling up. So make sure you get your tickets. Yeah, right now we want to show you guys this video about Fight Night, which is coming up in February. Money, sex, and what's the third one? Ex-girlfriends and ex-boyfriends. Something that's going to be rude if we just push them out of our lives. He smiled at me and said hi, and you went into a jealous rage. <laughs> money, sex, oh. and money. <laughs> yeah, basically. When she gets mad, the first thing she want to do is throw a blow. <laughs> throw a right hook. <sighs> and it usually happens around a certain time of the month. That is so not true. <laughs> that's true. And that's why I tell you to mark your calendar. Sex, sex, money. <laughs> I did throw a bucket at her. Against the wall. Time out. What are you talking about? You didn't think I was listening to your ideas. You don't listen. 
I'll repeat myself. I feel like I have to repeat myself a lot. Ooh. Well, it's never money for sex, which that's basically. Good. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. You bad. did not just say that. That is bad. Oh, anyway, yeah, that's basically it. Two things. <laughs> yeah, so we have our fight night coming up with Dr. Les and Leslie Parrott. It's going to be a great time. Um, if you know a couple that should go to this, pay for them to go to it. You can actually do that online at visitonechurch.com backslash fight night. Me and Claire are going to go because our relationship is perfect and we need more advice. And so we're going to go get more. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to go get more advice. And you're not married. That's <laughs> Pastor Cliff, that's true. That's true. I'm a wise man. <laughs> Um, but if you but if you know someone, invite them to go to that. If, if you know another couple, take them out on a date, and you guys can do a double date with it. Uh, it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a lot of advice. And yeah, good and it's going to be held at the gallows, so, and it's a collaborative effort with local churches. So just a great place for the Christian community in town to come together, attend an event together, and just make a statement that, you know, that we believe in marriage, and we can come together as the bigger body of Christ. So... That's awesome. Okay, let's see. One last announcement. So today is the kickoff um, of the pre-sale for our Valentine cookie sale. So uh, Tiffany will be here after service at the upcoming event table with a, with a sign-up sheet where you can pre-order your cookies. Um, the baking has already begun. Ms. Cheryl's been baking and getting cookies ready, and, and they'll be ready to pick up on the 11th of February. So you can pre-order. We'll also have extras that day. They're $5 a cookie. The sample cookie is still back there. Nobody ate it. I've got a feeling, though, one weekend we're going to come in here and there's going to be a bite missing. And we'll know who it is, right, Pastor Tracy? <laughs> <laughs> That's so gross. Anyway, Tiff will be here uh, at the end of this service. You can see her to, to put some cookies on hold. And this is the first fundraiser of the year for the kids to get ready uh, for camp. Okay? So at this time, if I can ask the ushers to come on forward, and I am going to um, uh, take the pray over the offering. And while they're coming forward, um, let's see. Let's pray first, and then we'll go into wins. Father, I just thank you so much uh, for the privilege of being in your house this morning, God. Um, and the privilege it is to, to just return the tithe to you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that in your economy, 90% is greater than 100%, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that uh, when we give back to you, Lord, that it is pleasing to you, Father. So please bless, Lord, um, the givers this morning. <coughs> their households, Lord, uh, their children, Lord, and those that are far off in their generations, God. And would you increase and multiply what we give today, that the others would come to know you, Lord, and we would be part of building your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So we had a really big win this weekend while we we're taking up the offering. We're going to show you this quick video. We've had some things starting up again, some projects starting up again around the church. And yesterday, some uh, families came out uh, and worked on the nursery. So we did our nursery remodel yesterday. So this is a peek at what That's our awesome. nursery now looks like. Those are, those are giraffes up on the wall. And we've got some nice paneling. That's not a giraffe. That's a Hathaway <laughs> playing in the ball pit. Uh, so uh, uh, the Julian painted and the Hathaways and the coffees and the cricks came out and uh, worked on this nursery remodel. We have a couple more projects in there, but stop by and take a look. Our nursery numbers are growing. Uh, we've seen a big increase in our, in our babies in our nursery. So thanks for that. And you may have noticed that the stage is starting to look a little different, the platform area. So thanks to all the guys that came out and helped and painted and prepped. And as we get ready uh, to celebrate our fifth birthday on March 4th, we all want to mark that on your calendar. Okay, so you'll see other projects and sign up on the connection card if you'd like to help with projects. They'll be going on all through the month of February. Yeah, that's awesome. So awesome. Uh, right now, we're going to go back into a time of worship. So if you guys would please stand with us, that would be awesome. I'm, I'm so excited what's happening around, around our church yes. at, at our campus. And it doesn't happen because of us, but it happens because of all of you. Yes. Um, so thank you. For, for everything that you guys have done, pouring out your time, your, your finances to, to help all of us grow and to, help, and to help the church grow. Without you guys, we wouldn't have any of this. So thank you so much. 
Um, as we go back into this time of worship, I just want to encourage you guys to to let loose. You know, be be happy, be energetic, raise hands, jump in the air if you want to. Um, because you know what, we get a we get to worship freely. We get to worship freely, and other people don't get to worship freely. And so today, let's celebrate that we get to worship freely, and that we get to we get to be here with other, with others. Jesus, thank you for this day, God. God, as we go to this time of worship, God, we just want to praise you for who you are. Thank you for letting us worship you freely and being and being who you are, God. Amen. Just one touch And 
And everything changes, everything changes with one word. The world rearranges, the world rearranges by one life. Death was defeated. Death was defeated This one love Has paid for my freedom Paid for my freedom No other hope No other love My one, my all Jesus
are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. children, God, that we can come and we can come before you with our needs, God, and you tell us to come boldly, come boldly that you might meet our needs, God. So if that's you this morning and you need prayer, would you just lift your hand? Just lift your hand if you need prayer. 
Okay, for, for, would you guys look around and get around the people that need prayer? Would you get around the people that need prayer? We're going to go into the throne room. If you want somebody to pray with you today, thank you, Jesus. Let's just lay hands and go before the King of Kings. Father, we just take this time, God, to come before you right now. We thank you for the access that we have to you, God. Thank you, Lord, that you allow us to come boldly and cry out, Father, we have a need. We have a need that is outside of ourselves this morning, God. Lord, you know, Lord God, what every heart's need, what every financial need, what every relationship need, Lord, what every medical need, God, what every job need, Lord, whatever illness, God, whatever lack, Lord God. We come to you and we lay those before you this morning, God, that you might meet our need, Lord, that we would give you glory, God, for all that you do, Lord. We thank you for who you are and your presence in our lives, God, and what a privilege it is. It is a privilege it is. It is a privilege to come to you, God, to make an altar before you, God, to seek help from you, God, to know you, to love you, God, to be in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ we can come before you we can make our requests known and Lord you hear them and you respond Lord help us to walk in the confidence of the God of the scriptures help us to walk in the confidence that when you say you will be there for us when you will walk with us that you're there when you say that you will bring healing you bring healing help us to walk in that confidence today in Jesus name Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. I wish I didn't have to go to this stupid meeting. I always say the wrong thing. I'm just going to embarrass myself again. I used to be nervous about going to the meetings, but now I actually look forward to them. God always gives me the right thing to say. I heard he was an arrogant jerk. My buddy says he's full of himself and he's impossible to be around. You know what? I'm going to give him a chance. You never know until you get to know someone. He may be really a nice guy. You want me to help him? Are you kidding me? I could barely help myself, much less someone else. Wow. I'd be honored to reach out to him. I know I'm not perfect, but I remember when I needed the same thing, and a buddy reached out to me. Count me in. Succeeding at the big things has a lot to do with the little things. Words matter. Small things, big difference. Small things, big difference. This is where we've been this uh, last couple weeks, and so we're continuing in this series. Um, and it's just, for me, it's been a great series to challenge me and uh, continue to work in my own life. And so excited. I'm, I'm seeing people post on our community page, the One Church community page, their word and their verse and the challenges going along with that. That's exciting just to see that God is moving and he's challenging us. He's stirring up some things in us. So uh, let's keep doing that. Uh, communicate, talk to each other about it. And let's see what God's going to do when we can focus on the small things to see the big results that we want. So we've been talking about this for a couple weeks, um, and our big idea, this whole thing is this. It's the small things that no one else sees that result in the big things that everyone wants. 
And uh, it is so true as I continue to journey through this series um, that we, we have to do those small things um, that nobody else is paying attention to. Um, and sometimes we're not paying attention to. Um, and so it's really a challenge for us uh, to do that. And we've been talking about kind of this idea. Last week, we talked about our thoughts. We introduced the series talking about our one word and our one verse. And so today, we're going to be talking about small things, big difference, and our words. Um, and and the, the reason we're talking about this is because our thoughts that come from our heart become our words, and our words become our actions, and actions become our habits, and habits define or determine our destiny. You know, and, and it's so, you know, we got to get this down. We got to have this understanding um, because if we want the changes in our lives or we want a certain destiny in our lives, then we need to make sure that our thoughts and our words and our actions and our habits equal that destiny, right? If, if my destiny is to be 180 pounds, it's a dream, it's a dream. <laughs> Everybody's got to have a dream. We just celebrated Martin Luther King Day, so I got a dream. All right, if my destiny is to have 100, be at 180 pounds, then I can't continue to eat all the cookies and all the candy. And I, I can't continue to eat all the carbs. And I, you know, uh, I, I have to exercise. I have to do the little things to get me there. But sometimes, I think sometimes, we want this great destiny but we're not willing to put in the work and the small things. And, and so it really trips us up. And then, then we want to get mad at God and others because we don't got our destiny, right? We want a great marriage. And if my wife would just change or my husband would just change, I would have a great marriage. That got really quiet. We'll just skip that right there. Uh, you know, it is... Uh, it is not them that needs to change. I'll just tell you that right now for those who said amen. Um, <laughs> I just had to get you there. It was fun. It was fun. All right. Billy's like, I'm never coming back. I don't like that guy. I've known him since high school. I still don't like him. All right. It's, it's okay. We'll go to coffee later. We'll figure it all out. It's all good. Uh, so, but our destiny, so often we want to change the big things, big results, big blessings, but we're not willing to be disciplined enough to do those small things. So today, we're going to look at the power of our words. Even the smallest words that we don't think matter have this incredible power. I love how John starts off in the book of John chapter 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made, and in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You see, the world and everything around us, it came into existence by the power of the word. And the power of that word was Jesus Christ. And so John's talking and he's saying that Jesus is the living word. Jesus is the word. And he came to this earth. Um, and that nothing exists without him, without the word. Right? God said, let there be light, and there was. There was power in the word. And there's power in our words. We don't understand this sometimes. We, I, I think many of us live as if, if our words don't matter or they don't have any impact. And, and that's just one of those things. That's one of those, right? Last week, we were talking about our thoughts and how do we, how do we fix the lies that the enemies told us. We, we look at the truth. And I think that's one of those lies that we've bought into, that words don't matter, right? That I have the freedom, freedom of speech, right? We all we got the freedom of speech. You know, they all were marching yesterday. We got the freedom of speech. And that's true. We got the freedom of speech. Doesn't always mean that you should use it. Doesn't always mean, you know, uh, he, you know I've, always, I've heard this too. You can be right and be wrong at the same time. 
right? You can be right, but if you say it the wrong way or say it at the wrong time, you, you're wrong. And, and so we, we have to be careful with our words because our words carry a powerful impact. I've said this before. So, you know, some of you remember this little, little thing when you were a kid, right? Sticks and stones may make, break my bones, but never hurt me. Wrong. That is like the biggest lie that children buy into because everybody here, and I'm sure most of you can think about somebody that spoke a word over you or about you or to you that just pierced you. And it still kind of hangs with you. As I say it right now, you're kind of going, oh yeah, that still hurts. And it could have been 20 years ago. And it still hears. That's the power of our words. So let's, we're going to look at this today. The wisest man who ever lived, King Solomon, he, he, people traveled. We've talked about it. They traveled to hear from him. He says this in Proverbs chapter 18, 21. You have your notes in your bulletin you can follow along with. Also, you have your notes to take home to talk it over so you can just research and study this throughout the week. But here's what King Solomon says. Proverbs 18, verse 21. He says, the tongue has the power of life and death. The tongue has the power of life and death. So today, here's the big idea. If I want to change the life I have, I need to change the words I speak. If I want to change the life I have, I have to change the words I speak because the tongue has the power of life and death. To change the life you have, change the words you speak. Small changes in these words make a big difference in the life we live. Now, please hear me this morning. This is not a name it and claim it message. This is not, I'm gonna speak into existence that new Mercedes and so I can get it. That's not what I'm talking about. That's, that's not what God's word is about. But it is about this. The words that we speak have life or death in them. They will determine our actions. They will determine our habits. They will determine our destiny. So we need to be careful of the words we speak. This message is about understanding the power of those words. It's the small things that no one else sees that result in the big things everyone wants. Now I'm telling you, this is a message that challenges me because I'm quick to speak, slow to listen. And that is the opposite of the scriptures. <laughs> and so I, have, I am challenged. Um, you know, I, how many have people around you that they are very careful with their words? Every word that they, says, that, that they say has meaning and it's purposeful and it's intentional and it's, it's powerful. How many have those people around you? All right. Yeah, I have those people. I'm not that. I'm just like, what? and we get in a conversation, and then I got to backtrack and eat my words. Um, and they're never very tasty the second time around. All right? But, uh, you know, but the, the importance of the small things, the, the words that come out of our mouth, are so vital to the life and the destiny that we receive. Now, James, the brother of Jesus, he gives us a clear understanding of the power of words. And, uh, you know, I think it's incredible that the brother of Jesus wrote a book in the Bible. And that's one of the things, you know, if you're thinking about, well, is Jesus really the son of God? I'm telling you what, if his brother believed that he was the son of God, like the guy that grew up with him, shared a room with him, did the chores with him, uh, you know. If his brother believed he's the son of God, that's pretty good evidence that he was the son of God. Because I know my brothers, and they're not. <laughs> they're not even angels. And my sister, she thinks she's an angel. And according to dad, she is an angel. But we, we don't qualify. So that, I, I'm just, that has nothing to do with the message, but except for if you're wondering who Jesus is, whether he's really the Christ, 
his brother thought he was. So that's good evidence for us. But James, his brother, gives us clear understanding of the power of the tongue. He says this. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. Now, I don't know. How many, ride, how many ride horses? How many ride horses? When's the last time? Bob, when's the last time he's been on a horse? He's, he's, been, he's been since I've been there. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, uh, all right. Now, if you, if you ride horses, um, you understand, you know, that, that that bit will help guide that horse. Now, there's a lot more into it than that, right, Bob? It's not just the bit. It's your knees and the, you know, I, there's, but, ha, I mean, horses are powerful, how many of you have ever been kicked by a horse? Anybody been kicked by a horse? Been kicked? A few of you been kicked? They're powerful. I mean, I always was afraid of horses. I started riding them about 15 years ago. I haven't rode horses in a long time. But I was always afraid of them because they were so powerful, I didn't think I could control them. Put me on a motorcycle, I'm fine because I control the throttle, I control the power, I control the brakes. It only does what I want it to do. But a horse... I was afraid of those for a long time, but then I realized that that little bit in that mouth tells that horse where to go, and, the, and it responds to that. So you can make a large horse go by where you want. A small rudder, verse 4 says, a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. I mean, it's amazing these large ships, these aircraft carriers that turn and maneuver with just a small rudder. Compared to the ship, that rudder is nothing. And yet all the winds, all the waves don't dictate. That rudder dictates the direction. It will choose the direction it will go. In the same way, watch this. So he's talking about the horse. He's talking about ships, how those things work. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but yet a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. It's the small things that make the big difference. The small things. You see, if we're, we're struggling in our marriage, then we need to look at the words we're speaking over our marriage. Are we speaking life-taking words or life-giving words? You know, I, as I watch and you see healthy marriages, you listen to how they talk. You listen how they respond to each other. You, you hear the life-giving words. Um, you know, there's some people, right? There's some people you just don't want to be around because all they speak is life-taking words. And you try to avoid them. You try to stay away from them. There's other people that you cannot wait to get around. Why? Because they speak life-giving words, and they're, they build you up. They build themselves up. Um, you know, it's, it's so hard, and I'm, I'm one of those people that I have to be careful because I, am a neg I can be negative. I can be the ha glasses half-empty person. And so I have to be careful with the words I speak. And this, so like this lesson, this message is like to me as much as it is to anybody. But we can either speak life-taking words or life-giving words. Again, King Solomon says in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise bring healing. Life-taking words pierce like a sword. They're destructive, devastating, debilitating. Life-giving words bring healing. They build up. They encourage. They, they bring health. He also says in Proverbs 15, 4, the soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Now, this is the wisest man in the world, and over and over in Proverbs, he talks about the power of the tongue. He talks about the life and the death that it brings, the piercing words that it brings, or the healing words. And he talks about that it brings life or it can crush the spirit. You know, we crush our spirit when we use words like this. 
did you mean to do that with your hair? <laughs> or, why aren't you married yet? Or this one, how many have heard this one? I wish you were more like your brother or sister. Yeah, right? Life crushing. Crush the spirit right there. Or you will never amount to anything. Crushing. You're such a disappointment. I don't know why we ever got married. Spirit crushing. I don't even know if I ever loved you. All right? Spirit crushing words. And we throw them around like they don't matter. I, I've heard couples say that to each other. And I'm like, how in the world do you think that that's okay? How in the world do you think that's going to help your marriage in any way? If your marriage is, is having a hard time saying those words, it's not going to help it. It's going to crush it. But life-giving words, I believe in you. Yes. I'm proud of you. Yes. I couldn't love you anymore. Yes. You're amazing. I'd marry you over and over again. I'm so grateful God brought us together. I'm so gr thankful that we get to face life together. The fight. <laughs> this morning, what kind of words do you use? Do you use your words that crush the spirit or give life? So before we get into the, some of this this morning, we're going to do a word audit. We're going to audit ourselves. And before we take this, I want to encourage you to be honest with yourself. I'm not gonna ask you to reveal your answers. I'm not gonna embarrass you by your answers, but the power of words is so important and so many of us are completely unaware of what's coming out of our mouth. So we're gonna do a thought audit this morning. So how are you when it comes to your words and others? How are you doing in when you, how you speak to others? Are you more life-taking or life-giving? So do the words that come out of your mouth towards others take life or do they give life? And you can rate that from a one to 10. So go ahead and do that now. Circle it on your paper, all right? The other side of it, it's not with also, it's with yourself, okay? You have others, you speak words over others that give life or take life, and then yourself. How do you do with self-talk? Is your self-talk life-taking or life-giving? Are you constantly beating yourself up with your life, your self-talk? Are you constantly looking in the mirror and, and, and thoughts and words start to come out that are life-taking or are they life-giving? Go ahead and circle that. Now, here's the deal with the, this audit. If we didn't score a perfect 10, we have a tremendous amount of room for improvement. Even if you scored a nine, you have a tremendous amount of room for improvement. Why? Because the words that we speak have the power of life and death in them. If I want to change the life I have, I have to change the words I speak. So how do we change the words we speak? How, how, do, we, how do we change our, our words? Well, we do the small things that no one else sees. The first thing we have to do is, if you can't say something life-giving, skip it. If you can't say something life-giving, skip it, right? Mama used to say when you were as little, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. How many live by that? All right? It is so hard. I love what uh, the Apostle Paul says here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Listen up. This is so key for our lives. It says this. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. 
Do not let any unwholesome words come out of your mouth. How many let some unwholesome words out of your mouth this week? This, yeah, come on. Some of you are just saints. I get it. I get it. You just all, this heaven just shines on you. I get it. I, but some of us others, we struggle in life. You know, we let the unwholesome, all right? Um, but the Bible says, do not let any unwholesome. What's unwholesome? The definition of unwholesome is something that is detrimental to the physical, mental, or moral well-being. So this verse is saying, don't let anything that could possibly, don't let anything come out of your mouth that could possibly be detrimental to yourself or someone else. Our words are to be used to build others up, not tear them down. This one verse, if we could understand this one principle of God's word, our lives could change forever. If we could understand the, the importance of this one verse, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only that is, which is helpful for building others up according to their needs. It would change our marriages, it would change our kids, it would change our jobs, it would change our careers, it would change our relationships, it would change our church. It would be amazing. Wouldn't it be amazing to be a part of a church that nobody let unwholesome words come out of their mouths? It's kind of quiet. I'll just move on. I, just, I would like to be a part of that. Um, but, you, know, uh, you know, I said criticism is not a spiritual gift. Um, it's actually a problem. Um, this one verse applied will change our lives. You say, why is this so important? Because Matthew chapter 12, Jesus says this in verse 36 through 7, 37. He says this. He says, I tell you that everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted and by your words you will be condemned. That's how important your words are. That's how important it is to not allow unwholesome words to come out of your mouth because we will all give an account. Now, I'm grateful for the blood of Jesus. I am grateful for the forgiveness of Jesus, but there's going to come a day that I'm going to give an account for all the unwholesome words that have come out of my mouth, all the critical words that have come out of my mouth. Now, hopefully you're not behind me in the line because we're gonna be there a while. Hopefully there's a Starbucks there because you're gonna need a rest, all right? But some of you, you're not far behind me on that. So um, it is so important. It's so important. The, the careless words that you throw out at your wife or your husband, you'll stand accountable for one day. Those life-taking words you have spoken over your marriage, you will stand accountable one day. Those critical life-taking words you've spoken over your kids or your jobs or your employer or your boss or your friends, you will stand accountable one day. So if you can't say something life-giving, skip it. Small thing. Small thing. If we want to change the life we have, we have to change the words we speak. So how do we change the words we speak? We do the small things. So the second thing is this. If you think of something life-giving, say it. If you think of something life-giving, say it. I love, here's the, the wisest man in the world. Again, he's talking about words. Proverbs 16, 24, he says, gracious words are like honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bone. It doesn't say gracious thoughts. I had a good thought. It says gracious words are like honeycomb. So if you think of something life-giving, say it. Don't rob somebody of a blessing. Don't rob yourself of a blessing. Because that life-giving word could be exactly what they needed, exactly what you needed, right at the right time. So if you think of something life-giving, 
say it. I say it to my kids. I say it, you know, whenever I get, just here and there, when I get a chance, I want to remind them, I want to remind my daughters, you are God's masterpiece. You're created in his image. You are beautiful. Why? I want to speak life over them. I say it to my kids all the time. Why do I love you? And they'll say it because you're, because we're your kids, or you're, we're your boys, or we're your girls. Absolutely, you can't change that. I want to speak life over them. Speak life. The world has enough life-taking messages out there for people. The world has enough things out there, enough words. Um, it doesn't need you or me to help. We're to give life-giving words. Have you ever had someone share a word with you or speak over your life and that word changed the direction or the emotional state or the mental state of your life? Yeah. Right? A couple weeks ago, we were in our fast. Right? We were doing the seven-day fast. And uh, we went on Friday, we decided, just some things were happening in our lives and in our family's life, we decided that we were going to go to Bethel for their nine o'clock prayer during the fast. And we went there. And, um, you know, I went there with a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry, a lot of just different things going on in, in, in our lives. And we went there for prayer. And um, we just, things seemed to be overwhelming us. And so we're there at prayer, and Pastor Kyle decides that they're going to circle up and they're going to pray over Shelly and I. And right then and there, somebody spoke life into us. Yes. We started to pray, and Mom prayed over us. And she spoke life into us. She prayed over us, basically like we said, we have not had mom pray over us like that since the day we got married. And she spoke life into us. She, the words she prayed were the words we needed to hear. And they were a blessing. So if you think of something life-giving, say it. Right after that, as we wrapped up, Deb Wilson came up to us and she said, I got something from the Lord that I need to share with you. She, she said, I got this picture, and this picture is that you guys, you guys are swimming against the waves. You're swimming against the waves. The waves keep crashing, but you're swimming against the wave. And God says, just keep swimming because you're going to make it past the breaker, and that it's going to be smooth. And at the point that she said those words that day, I walked into that prayer meeting feeling like I was drowning. Feeling like, Lord, I just want a life raft and just get me out of here. If you, th if you have thoughts or you think of something that's life-giving, say it. Don't rob somebody of a blessing. You don't know what that little word that you speak over them may do to change the direction of their life. That's right. You don't know. If you think of something life-giving, say it. If you're in your marriage, if you need to be speaking life, you need to be speaking life-giving words. You need to be saying, I love you. I'm blessed to be married to you. You're the most important person in the world. What if I don't feel that way? Speak life-giving words anyway. If your marriage seems to be dead, speak life-giving words. If your kids seem to be lost and hopeless, speak life-giving words. If your circumstances seem to be overwhelming and you feel like they're unbearable and you're going to drown, speak life-giving words. And I love the second part of this. Don't just encourage others with your life-giving words. Encourage yourself. Watch what King David did. King David, he's, he's, he's kind of, he's in that overwhelming, uh, it seems unbearable state. He's kind of freaking out. People were wanting to stone him. They were wanting to get rid of him. And he says this in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. He says, he says this, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. 
Did you realize you can encourage yourself by the words you speak in the Lord? So not only if we think something, we need to give it to somebody else, but when we think something life-giving, we need to say it to ourselves. How many tend to be like me? I'm usually my worst critic. Right? Like I, I, I can go home from Sundays and I start thinking about the message and I start thinking about what I said. And, oh, man, I didn't get that. I didn't do that. And I can just like go through this cycle. And the next thing you know, I'm like, man, you are the worst communicator ever. You should never do this again. Uh, you should have stuck with junior hires, you know, or something like that. But I, I, I can be my worst critic. Our self-talk can either be life-giving or life-taking even if the words don't come out of our mouth. So we need to be careful that we do what David did. He encouraged himself through the Lord his God. We need to encourage ourselves with our self-talk. If you look in the mirror and you're thinking life-taking thoughts and words are running through your head, then you should probably print out some things. You should probably print out some scriptures that are life-giving and put them on your mirror and and, and put them where you're going to see them. If you look in the mirror and you start, oh, I'm this and I'm that and I can't do this and I'm ever, then start putting things there that you start reading and you replace those thoughts with life-giving words and thoughts. So this morning, here's, here's a litmus, litmus test for our words to know if they're life-giving or life-taking. Can you say these words at the end of your statement? And that's the little words are this. And that's the way I want it. So here's how it works. It's real simple. The words you speak, at the end of those words, you say this statement. That will tell you whether they're life-giving or life-taking. My marriage is terrible, and that's the way I want it. My wife or my husband is the reason I'm miserable, and that's the way I want it. Life-taking. My kids are so rebellious, and that's the way I want it. My kids are wasting their lives and will never amount to anything, and that's the way I want it. My job is the worst, and that's the way I want it. My boss is a jerk, and that's the way I want it. See, if you add that on there, That will tell you whether the words that are coming out of your mouth are life-giving or life-taking. Now, let's flip that around. My marriage is worth working on, and that's the way I want it. My wife, my husband, is a blessing in my life. That's the way I want it. My kids are a gift from God, and that's the way I want it. My kids have a good foundation, and they're going to figure it out, and that's the way I want it. My job is a great opportunity, and that's the way I want it. My boss is no different than me, and he's learning and he's growing, and that's the way I want it. See, you could speak life-taking or life-giving. And guess what? You will get what you speak. You will get what you speak. I'm learning this. I am challenged with this. My wife's a man and down here because she knows that I am challenged in this area. But I'm not the only one. Just because you say the right words, the way you say it can be life-taking. So you got to be careful and you got to be able to end it with, and that's the way I want it. So our challenge this week is we have our one word, we have our one verse We have our one thought. What is your one statement that you could speak that's going to be life-giving for you this week? My word is balance. My verse is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Be careful, Tracy, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. And my thought is it's not by my strength or power, but by God's spirit that I will be different. And that's my words that I'm going to speak over my life. And here's the challenge of this. 
I'm doing terrible in this the first three weeks of this year. I'm challenged. God has challenged me to balance my life, to balance my family, to balance everything. And I'm just telling you, I'm tanking. It's, it, it just sucks. <laughs> We've went three weeks in a row that we haven't taken a day off. It's every day of the week. Something's going, something's happening. Almost every night of the week. And I'm sitting here going, Lord, but you gave me this message. You told me I'm to have balance and that I'm not to walk as the unwise, but I keep walking like an idiot and I keep going seven days a week. What's going on? And this morning as I'm coming here and I'm stressed out, I'm worried about everything, I had to say these words. It's not by your strength, Trob, or your power, but by God's spirit. He will be different. And I can't wait till next week till that preacher talks about your actions and your habits. And I hope that guy really brings it next week because I need some help in my actions to go along with my word and my verse. I'm just praying that that guy knows what he's talking about. Um, but what's, your, what's the words? What's your one statement? It may be your thought that you need to express verbally. Small things that no one else sees bring the big results that everyone wants. It's the small words. So what's your one statement? I'm going to ask Andrew to come back as we get ready to close. You see, today's message is much bigger than our one verse. It's much bigger than our one word. It is these small things that can bring life and breathe life and give life to our marriages, our families, our situations, our jobs. And we need to start speaking life, life-giving words. My marriage is a blessing. My children are growing in their faith. The, the favor of God is upon them. My body is a dwelling place of the Most High. I'm going to get in better shape. With God's power, I will overcome. My job is a blessing. With God's help, I'll work in such a way to bring glory and honor to him. If you want to change the life you have, you have to change the words you speak. For words have the power of life and death. The most powerful words that we could ever speak are these. Jesus, I declare you as Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead, that I might be saved. Those are the most powerful words you could ever speak. Sometimes I need to say those, I, I really need to say those daily. Jesus, I declare you are Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead so that I could be saved. I'll tell you, that changed my destiny. destiny when I knelt down in my room and I declared these words. So this morning, the most powerful words you could speak are right here. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, maybe this morning, that's where you need to start. Maybe you need to say those words for the very first time. Maybe you just need to say them for the thousandth time just to remind yourself this morning. So as I pray, you declare those words. You speak those words out this morning. Lord, you said if we openly declare that you are Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised you from the dead, we will be saved. For by believing in our hearts that we are made right with God, 
and we openly declare with our words, our life-giving words, our faith in you. And we walk in that salvation today. In Jesus' name, amen. It's the small things, big difference. Small things, big difference. Maybe this morning you have realized that some of your words that have been coming out of your mouth have been life-taking, unwholesome, destructive towards yourself and towards others. And the big results that you desire, uh, the destiny that you want is being destroyed by the words that you're speaking. Today's the perfect day to start speaking life-giving words. Today's the perfect day to say, Lord, forgive me for the careless, unwholesome words that have come out of my mouth that have been life-taking to my marriage, to my kids, my job, and my life. And then some, in some cases, we need to humble ourselves and apologize. Maybe we need to apologize to our spouse. Maybe we need to apologize to our kids. Maybe we need to apologize to our boss. This doesn't mean going there and bringing up all the life-taking words. It means apologizing, asking forgiveness for not speaking life-giving words. And then we need to work on the words that we speak that they would be life-giving. I'm gonna pray one more time as we close. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, maybe this morning you realize that the words that have been coming out of your mouth have been life-taking. And you, the Holy Spirit is working on you this morning, putting a check in your life, putting a check in your heart, saying you can no longer let those things out. You no longer can speak that way. That you have to change the way you speak. You have to change the words you speak to change the life you have. And this morning, that's you. You realize that the Holy Spirit has been dealing with you about the words you've been speaking over your life, over your marriage, over your kids, over your job, over your relationships. And today is the day that God said, no more. Don't let any unwholesome word come out of your mouth, but only what is life-giving and building up of others, because one day you will stand accountable for it. Maybe that's you this morning, and you just need to say, that's where I need to start. And I want to pray with you. I'm, I'm with you in that. And you'd lift up your hand and say, that's me. I need to change the words that come out of my mouth. And just lift up your hands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You put them down. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the honesty of the heart. I thank you, God, that uh, it's not too late to speak life-giving words. It's not too late to speak the words that, that will build others up, that will bring health and, and, and life to others. So Lord, today we say, forgive us for the unwholesome words, for the life-taking words that have come out of our mouth. And today we surrender it to you. I surrender my tongue to you. I surrender the words to you, Lord, that I would speak life-giving words. Life-giving words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with us this morning? And uh, as we get ready to go, I'm going to have Shelly come and dismiss you, just remind you of a few things. But uh, in your bulletin, there's some take-home notes. Uh, talk it over. Use those throughout the week. Uh, and we'll see you next week, Shelly. Oh, great message this morning on our, on our words. We'll all be checking in with each other next week, huh? So uh, a couple of reminders of uh, volunteer rally is Friday night. Sign up, visit onechurch.com backslash dream team. Youth hype night on uh, next week, Sunday at six o'clock. And see Tiff at the table to get an order for your Valentine's cookies, okay? All right, we love you all. See you next week or see you Friday night.